college beat door. Just don't like that. Just broke it to leave a snack for prayer. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight to come to conduct our school board business. Please give us the wisdom and guidance to make decisions the best for our county according to your rule. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Brooke. Uh, for those who don't know, Mr. Turner, you know that he's not here, but he is a new grandfather today. Oh, 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 oh all right. Right. Well, I can understand that maybe was a giant. <laughs> I think he weighed over 10 pounds. And, but I talked to Mr. Turner on the way over here, and everything is good. He said the mom and the baby were sleeping, and Mr. Turner was taking a nap. And you know Turner. You know what Turner did. <laughs> so they were taking to go back to the hospital around 5, about 5 o'clock or a little after. This is over 10 pounds. Thank you. Everybody knows we're going to We're here tonight uh, to adopt a great. Yeah, Mr. Cummins? Yes, sir. Go on the deck. All right. Well, you have in front of you the, uh, probably more information than you want. But uh, I thought this would be a good resource for you going forward. You know, if you have assistance to call you about certain things, you can say, I think I saw that somewhere. So at least you can have a place you can flip back to and look at it and call and ask the question if you need to. But I tried to lay it out where you could maybe follow some of this. Uh, but the first thing we're supposed to talk about in this, this is the public hearing. This is one of two public hearings. We'll have another one, September 16th, I believe. Uh, first thing we're supposed to talk about is the millage, and then we're supposed to talk about the budget. So you have in front of your book uh, proposed uh, motions that will be required at the end of our conversation. First one being the millage, the second one being the budget. So having said that, let's look first at the rollback rate and all that stuff. Uh, if you will, go with me to page Tax increase. 
And so even though it's not very much money, it still requires a notice of tax increase. So that's the way the advertisements were laid out, and uh, that's what I had to do. So any questions about the millage? This is a public meeting, so anybody in the, in the room can speak. Anybody want to say anything about it? Have questions about it? Where does that discretionary rate that's set by the state? It's a, it's set, yes sir. And it's been that for quite some time actually. So if there's no questions, I would I would like to entertain a motion about the millage and we'll talk about the budget. I move to approve the tentative millages follows and adapt the tentative millage resolution. Required budget effort 5.031, basic discretionary 0.748, capital outlay 1.50 for a total millage of 7.27. Thank you, Dennis. Any questions about the millage? The total millage reflects a positive change of 0.51% of the current year's total proposed rate, plus a percent change of the rollback rate as found on line 22 on the school's taxable value. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? I would like to say I read in the paper Sunday, I think, Saturday or Sunday, Lockwood County paper proposing the tax rate to increase on the same time of deal. I think I have a choice about it. No, really. Uh, it's actually, in the back of your book, the question that was asked is can we raise the millage higher than what is required? Uh, I did write the DOE and I got a response. So it's in the back of your book if you want to look at it. I got it up. Yeah, thank you, sir. Basically, the rollback rate, that's it. That's <coughs> if you want to participate in the MDFP, that's what you have to do. So even though it's not much of a tax increase, it is, it is a little bit of a tax increase. But the trick this really just because of the values of one. So are you got a 0.51% of that rate? Yeah, that's okay. Less than one. If you want to look at what the effect of that is, while we're on the village, look at uh, page 21. It's a little synopsis I do each year. I'm not going to go through every page in this book, but I thought this was pretty interesting. I got some history here. And uh, you see that the values have actually gone up one and a half percent. But the real increase in taxes, assuming that there's a 3% increase in the values of the home, started with a $100,000 home or so, uh, it's going to be up to $126,000 now. And your, your tax levy would go up about $7. So most people will not even notice that it's happening. That's a trip to McDonald's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Is there any other discussion? Uh, you ready to vote? Yes, All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passed. Okay, just look at the budget. If you will, look at the first three pages of your book. The first one is labeled as 1R. R means replaced. Uh, what I'm trying to do is advertise the budget as close to what I think it will actually be when we actually adopt the tentative budget. And I've got some good news and some bad news. Good news is we were able to chase down some other revenues that previously we weren't able to report. So if you look at uh, page 1, uh, 1A, just keep going through there and you'll see 1A. That's what was advertised. One A was what was advertised, and one R is what we reflect. So the difference is, if you look at one B page right behind it, you'll see that the revenue went up two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars in general fund. Uh, there was some unaccrued uh, revenues that we had not recognized in the uh, EBRET. We were able to claim those. We may not actually get the money until September or October, but it was actually earned from January to June, so we felt like it was a valid receipt. We were able to book that and that draw our fund balance up. So, so 
So the good news is we have a little more money than what we thought we had. What does E rate stand for? E rate is, uh, I don't know what it stands for, but we can file for reimbursement of our uh, communication lines. Probably electronic. Probably is something that's electronic. I mean, it, what it, E is for. You know, Tom? I'm not sure, but it's an infrastructure uh, on any technologies. It's not for computers, programs, but it's all your infrastructure, all your yeah. underground things, anything dealing with with the uh, operating. Right. In other words, for our, our telephones and our, our fiber and our connectivity, the telephone company will pay in less than 90 dollars I think it's 85 yeah. so It's I a very good deal. And you can get you can up to up to ninety percent reimbursement, and the E rate. The beauty of that is, and this one people talk about in school, is you can use when it comes back to the general. You can use it for other things. So anyway, that's uh, that was a good thing. We we got a little extra revenue there that we weren't we weren't counting on before. So that helped get our fund balance up. But the bad news is, if you look in the uh, Federal call, special revenue call. Uh, our food service, uh, after we adjusted our inventories, we lost a little bit more money in food service. So it's about uh, $45,000. We went down to about $45,000, so about $50,000 adjustment. The total change in the advertised budget in this budget is about $179,000. I think it's still, uh, you know, pretty close to what, what was advertised, so I feel like it's okay to adopt. I mean, I would think it would be okay to adopt a 10 inch budget that was that close to what was advertised. So, you're talking about the total budget of $79 million, that's so not very much to change. And then, of course, the other two pages is the notice of proposed tax increase, which is on page two. And the other is the notice of tax for school capital outlay, which is on page three. And you notice that the construction of the new Wilson Middle High School is the first thing on that list. All the other items that's listed there, like the five buses and other things, it's, uh, we will not, more than likely, we will not be spending money on those items. But I advertise it in the event that after three years of gone, we get some delinquent tax money. We can use it for those things. What that two rate deal that apply for the new school too? Yes, sir. We have to give that money back to the state, or can we have? No, sir. It's, it's our money. So if you're interested in how we got to all these numbers, I'll be happy to spend as much time as you want to tonight if you want to do some of this. There's backup in here for each one of those funds, general funds, special revenue, debt service, capital outlay, internal service funds. Uh, so I have support there. You can trace those numbers in there if you're, if you're interested. One thing I would say that we, we might want to talk just a moment about is FTE, page six to eight, because that certainly does impact our budget every year, and it's something that the public may or may not understand and have any idea of what we're fighting here. If you look at page five, you see the forecast. That's really what, how the budget process begins based on the forecast. And then page six is the historical changes in our FTE, and then the next couple pages is renditions of the same information, it's just in different form. But we've lost 755 FTE since uh, 2007, so about 12% of our FTE has disappeared. So that directly impacts what our resources are. So we're hoping that trend is coming to an end. But, uh, so far, it's been slowed down too much. That train's still moving. Is there a way to know? Do we know how many homeschoolers, how many are? I can tell you exactly, but it's in the neighborhood of 300. 300. And how about at private schools? We don't know the private schools. We don't have private schools. Okay. How does that homeschool 300 compare to like 2007? I don't know. Um, I know if it's. 
It's it's well, it's tough, it, it may be up a hundred or so. Um, I, I couldn't give you the exact numbers either, but the service is going up. One of the big drivers is not having to take the state assessments. And two, there's information in here for you, charter schools and the K scholarships. Those three things combined is about a million and a half dollars. This county of revenue for us comes in as part of that $40 billion we get in the door, but we don't have any use of that at all. It's like three and a half percent of our budget just goes right out the window. Do we get any administrative costs? Five percent. Five percent. For a charge. For the charge. Okay. And I'm from the K here. Not for K, not for private. Now, I, I think people would just be shocked if they knew how much money went to private schools through Title I programs and so forth. Uh, they get a program chair of the federal programs. And, we, and it, it takes our personnel time and effort to make sure that they, you know, are spending their money correctly, spending it within the guidelines and so forth. We still have to oversee it with the private schools, but we get no administrative cost for that. Like a good argument. You had asked previously, I think at the last hearing, uh, about the bus schedule. On page 36, there's a schedule of buses that's been purchased for the years. This is an action item, really, but just to let you know where we are in the process. But at the same time, we've reduced our, I mean, we've lost FTE, we've lost students, number of students that ride buses too. Right. But when I took office in 2008, we had 81 or 82 bus routes, and we're down to like 68 bus routes now. So we are behind in our bus purchases, and, and that is a concern. But we've also reduced our number of bus routes too. Mr. Evans, on this thing, on this 36, page 36, the oldest bus we got was purchased in 1998, is that correct? Or can you tell by looking at the... No, that, that's not what this is. This is the buses that, when they were purchased... Okay, all right. What they cost, what the average cost was, you can see the average cost is not significant. Right. Over $100,000 now. You know, the the private bus is almost double since. Yeah. That's 14 years. And, and 15 years what, the, what, what, our, what we used to do back in the day when we had money, we tried to replace 10% of the fleet a year so that in 10 years you got your whole fleet replaced. I find it very interesting that the private school bus has been double in 14 years, but the funding and education haven't done anything. I find well, it very, I find it very a, uh, a real sore spot with me, too, with the rhetoric that's put out by the state is that. You know, we, we're funding it almost like we did in 2007. You know, it's not far now. But think of the cost of expenses that have gone up, like you talk about double, and textbooks double the amount of money. Fuel. Fuel, Fuel costs cost you three times the amount of money. And so, yeah, they're almost up to the point of total revenue for 2007. But they are so far behind because our expenses are just doubled and tripled since then. That was a source of problem. So if there's no other questions or the audience has any, any questions, anybody have any questions, I'd be happy to address them and talk to you about them. Otherwise, we need to entertain a motion to accept the tender. Motion to approve the tentative budget and adopt the resolution to adopt the tentative budget. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? You ready to vote? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes. The budget in the budget has been approved and adopted. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's uh a few people got an email, I think, uh, Saturday maybe, Friday, Saturday, Wednesday. Uh,
Okay. Mr. Kreshner, you had a few brief remarks for Yes. I uh, sent you out an email, and just to go around the other again for now, this, the plans for Wolf's Middle School, we all already approved these plans. It was a reuse plan for the school that we visited at Twin Fire School, and glad we were still on these coast. So the plans have already been approved by you. Now, we were going to a checklist on there the other day, and there is a requirement of the phase three drawings, or phase three plans have to be approved by all this person. First off, we've already approved these plans. However, in our meetings with teachers and staff, we've had several meetings and some of those plans have changed. Okay, so we did not want to cause the auditor any reason to uh, have criticism. So that's what we're coming to you and showing you the plans that have changed and asking for those approvals. And basically, the area, and I'm just expressing if you have anything you want to show or comments or whatever, but basically it's, we've met with all the teachers in the ag departments and the, and the ROTC and, and uh, the health teachers and um, PE teachers and all the folks and programs that cause movements of walls and things like that and we have done those. And uh, so that's what has changed is because of the input of the teachers. Questions, concerns? But it's the same plans other than that. I just need the group of those plans. So moved. Second. Jerry Scott. All in favor, please speak up by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Good deal. Man, there's more better than I do. I hope so. I hope so. I'm talking about, I mean, I hope so from my point as well. I, I took it as you hope you knew what we did. I do too. Uh, uh, I do. So, anything else? We don't have anything else on the agenda, so we'll keep the turn.